Hello friends, Tal here, and welcome to another Legion beta build video. Um, no shit, as soon as I finished recording the last video, um, this one, this new beta build went ahead and popped up. I was actually wondering why I couldn't get onto the beta realms. It was saying everything was off. I had just updated an add-on for the beta, so I thought I broke my, my Legion beta. But nope, there was a new beta build that went and pushed. Um, seems like they're doing them quicker now. And this particular build has some very big changes for two of the specs. The tank specs, I should say, um, and I wanted to hold back a little bit, see what the the you know the theory crafters, the MMO champion forum people were talking about, to see if how big of a, ma a massive change this was going to be essentially, um, and it's it's very interesting, very interesting, and it actually feeds into something that I've been doing in secret recently, kind of a little pet project that I'll be letting you guys know about a little bit later, but very quickly, I'm just going to go over the profession Q and A. Um, session that went out went and happened on Thursday I'm gonna be usually if anything important comes up relating to tanking or tanks in general in the Q&A's every Thursday I'll go ahead and mention it uh, this particular one doesn't really necessitate a video it would really just be like clickbait not really into that um, essentially the big point that I want to take from this is uh, crafted gear starts at an item level of 815 and can be upgraded with obliterum or a Oh, fuck, I'm going to say this fucking incorrectly. Obliterum, obliterum can be used to upgrade it up to 850. 850 is the item level of normal mode raids. And obviously normal mode raids are going to have tier set bonuses, special trinkets, probably the really good relics and stuff that you want for your weapons. Um, and whereas before I was of the opinion that you because the crafting um, gear limit is gone that you could possibly even want to go ahead and get yourself geared out completely in crafted gear just so you can avoid having any of that gear because so to explain this again everything that I'm saying and doing is with the intention and the slant of a mythic raider or a mythic dungeon group that kind of thing and in mythic raids as a tank you're usually second priority on the gear list usually goes DPS tanks and then healers you gear a tank enough that they can survive while being super tanky you gear the healers enough that they can heal people just barely and have the mana for it and then you gear the shit out of your dps so they can murder everything in the raid so my intention was to make sure that all my tanks had a crafting profession for their armor spec so that if need be i could fill myself out with a full set of crafted gear and cover any sort of little inconsistencies or if things just don't drop. For example, if you just if you can't get lucky, you can't get a helm to save your goddamn life, you just craft it, get it done with get get it done, uh, over and done with. Um essentially, because it only goes up to 850, it still will be useful for items that just don't drop, uh, especially if you don't do split raids. If, you know, you're you're missing a cloak, a dagger, uh, not a cloak, a dagger, a cloak, a helm and a fucking ring or some shit this could definitely help you out there uh, it's not going to be as high as I was expecting I believe in a, some of the past beta builds it was up to like heroic item level from raids uh, but it's still something to keep in mind still something you should know about and of course anything that you're going to be upgrading is going to require Blood of Sargeras which comes easier from gathering professions I would still highly recommend everyone um, you want to go ahead and have a profession for your armor spec for your main so that you're able to craft the things that you need if it comes down to it uh, but that's the only real big thing from the profession Q&A that I wanted to go ahead and mention. Now we're going to go ahead and get into the class changes. First one, Demon Hunter. Very specifically, Vengeance. Sheer has been changed to generate 10 pain instead of 12 pain. So it was nerfed very slightly. But Soul Cleave was also changed. Soul Cleave is going to cost you between 30 to 60 pain. Now I know that right here it says 20 to 40, or 20 to spending more pain increases damage and done. So originally, when the build came out, it was 20 to about 60 pain, and the more pain you you use, the more healing, the more damage you do. But it was stealth fixed on the beta side, not in the tooltip side. It's actually one of the new benefits of their new uh, file system that they have. They're able to do these updates very quickly. They don't do them as often on the live game because they don't want to confuse players with the tooltips, um, but they did it on the beta. It actually goes from about 30 to about 60, and the, the numbers tweaked a little bit. I think it's a little bit of a damage nerf, but it's still the healing is still decent. But essentially, depending on if you're banking up your pain, you'll be able to get more healing from a soul cleave. The only negative thing is, that it takes a little bit of the control away from pain. You don't always want to use all your pain up. You don't always want 
to have, um, you know, if you, if you, for example, you had fracture, you use one fracture, one soul cleave, boom, you're out of pain, done, the donezo, the whole thing's gone. You don't have the choice anymore of control over using, for example, I want a 20 pain soul cleave because I need a little bit of healing. Now I need a 60 one because holy shit, this thing's fucking my face. Um, so it's bad in the sense of control. But the scaling on it is actually pretty decent. It seems like it's not too bad of a nerf. Of course, the artifact trait was buffed in the very last uh, beta build that actually made it give you an additional 60% healing when you get the artifact trait completely maxed out. So it's really good. Um, the verdict has, is not out yet on how good or bad this change is. But the other thing that changed was Soul Barrier. It actually got a really massive buff. Um, apparently beforehand it was actually not com not competing very well. It wasn't doing the right numbers. Apparently it has scaling issues. But they went ahead and increase basically the shield value they're going to be getting. Um, it seems that soul fragments were also nerfed to not do as much healing, so that got a little bit of a change, and it appears that because of these things combined, Fracture is either a dead talent or a talent that you can take once you have a decent amount of gear on you. So it seems that as far as Vengeance Demon Hunter goes, when you're choosing your talents and everything, if you want to go ahead and take, let's look right here real quick. Fracture is on the fourth row and it's competing with feed the demon consuming soul fragment reduce the remaining cooldown demon spikes by one second fantastic soul rending 50 percent leech while metamorphosis is active super fantastic because again you're going to be popping into meta randomly and then fracture costing 40 pain and just creating two lesser soul fragments because the lesser soul fragments do a little bit less healing and because your pain is a little less uncontrollable because of soul cleave scaling now um, it seems that fracture has lost a little bit of value it's not going to be as useful and i think that until you get a little bit of gear uh, from what i was reading on the forums i try to do a little bit of research before i talk out of my, out of my ass um, but it seems that you're going to want to have a certain level of gear to be able to use it or that it's just not going to be as useful anymore so that's the changes for vengeance uh, not necessarily bad but just different um, as far as uh, Guardian Druid comes, nothing went ahead and got changed there. Uh, monks, that's the other big one. Okay, so I'm going to try to explain this the best way I possibly can. I'm going to try not to lose anybody here, but just come down with me. We're going to take a little bit of a journey. I'll hold your hand. Don't freak out. Fortifying Brew. Cooldown change from 5 minutes to 7 minutes. Don't freak out. Just just come come with me on this road. Don't, don't freak out. Keg Smash is going to reduce the remaining cooldown on your bruise, bruise by four seconds. Okay? Black Ox Brew. Cooldown change from one minute to 1.5 minutes. And then all the level 100 talents were changed. But first we're gonna take a look at this bruise thing. Essentially, Fortifying Brew used to be a talent that would have Keg Smash and Tiger Palm. Your Blackout, uh, I don't know if it's Blackout combo, but the talent at level 100 used to reduce the cooldown of Fortifying Brew when you keg smash your Tiger Palm, just like it does for your Purifying Brew or your Iron Skin Brew. But they went ahead and said, we're just going to bake that right in. But we're going to increase the cooldown of Fortifying Brew to compensate. Now, if they hadn't increased the cooldown of Fort Brew, if they had only made it 6 minutes instead of 5 minutes or 7 minutes, or if they have just left it alone and left it at 5 minutes, I would say that was a massive, welcomed, fortunate, great fucking fantastic thank you blizzard buff they didn't they made it seven minutes in real practice with perfect timings and everything the actual cooldown of fortifying brew if you're using it on cooling will be about 4.4 minutes now obviously that's not going to be what actually happens you're not actually going to be playing in that manner um essentially i think that instead of being just a nice bonus it's now a cumbersome annoyance i have always i have said since freaking since mob I wanted an additional little cooldown for Brewmasters. Now when they had one charge of guard. In Wad with two charges of guard. Elusive Brew not really being a cooldown, but just something you kinda have all the all the time up. Uh, and then having Fort Brew and then what either your talented diffuse magic or your talented damp and harm. You you're okay without any cooldowns, especially if you take into account the legendary ring. But in Legion, I do feel the weight of not having an additional damage reduction cooldown. You have Fortifying Brew, and then you have the Artifact ability that I can't think of the name of right now, which just makes you kind of immune to damage for three seconds because you just, you know, you every, they miss everything. Um, it's, it's very noticeable that you don't have an extra damage reduction ability. It's very noticeable that, you know, if, if a specific mechanic is coming and you just want to make it hit you less hard, you don't really have that choice. You just have Iron Skin Brew. 
and you're really not supposed to use it when you're in high health because it it doesn't play well with the mechanics of the class. So I, I'm not happy about the Fortifying Brew change to 7 minutes. But I think that making Keg Smash and Tiger Palm reduce all of your brews cooldown is interesting because that also works on Black Ox Brew, which is why they made it 1.5 minutes because you're going to be reducing it by more. I still don't like Black Ox Brew just because you refill your energy instantly. You're going to waste your energy. Let me just be honest. I still have energy capping issues, and I'm trying my best not to cap energy, and I don't ever feel like I need more brew charges. I don't ever feel like I need more energy. This, like... I don't, I don't know what kind of gear set you have to be using to make this worthwhile, but whatever. Um, now, they changed level 100 talents, and thank God they did this because they finally had some sort of variance. Sort of, it's, a, it's an actual choice. It's not an active choice besides blackout combo, but fuck, I'll take it over the other level 100 talent choices. So, Elusive Dance. Purifying Brew now clears an additional 15% of damage laid with Stagger. Fantastic, because right now it only it only takes away 50% of it, which can be really annoying later on. Um, but it also grants up to 15% dodge and damage done for 6 seconds based on level of Stagger damage purified. So essentially, if you, if you purify um, Light Stagger, you get 5% dodge, 5% damage done. Medium stagger, 10% dodge, 10% damage done. 15, uh, heavy stagger, 15% dodge, 15% damage done. And the word on the beta realm essentially is once you get into anything higher than heroic dungeons, you're in red stagger all the motherfucking time. You are hitting, you're being hit so hard and staggering so much damage, you're constantly in the state of red stagger, which means if you take elusive dance, you're almost giving yourself a 15% dodge, 15% damage done, um, as long as you keep purifying, which you remember is more important here than it has been at any other point in the game besides maybe during tot when you had that set bonus so good talent blackout combo blackout strike now empowers your next ability so what does blackout strike do now it's a three second cooldown and the only thing it does is damage and then a little bit of damage reduction when you have the artifact trait for it what it will do now is when you use it you can empower tiger palm to deal 200% increased damage, making your hardest hitting ability. You can make Breath of Fire cooldown be reduced by 6 seconds, which again is not only AoE damage, but also it's going to be giving you a damage reduction aura because Breath of Fire does the same thing as Blackout Strike once you have the artifact trait. You can empower Keg Smash to reduce the remaining cooldown on your bruise by 2 additional seconds, so I think that'll be 6 seconds of cooldown reduction. You can empower Iron Skin Brew to grant you a stack of Elusive Brawler, which is your mastery, which essentially means that every single time you get hit by an ability, you get a stacking passive aura that basically gives you a, a higher and higher chance to dodge the next ability. It's kind of lame. It's out of your control, but it's just so nice. It, it's further cementing that whole Monks of the Dodge tanks now, which, God, you know, fuck, man, I hate that, but that's what it is now, and we got to play with it. And then it can imp empower your Purifying Brew, pausing your, your stagger damage taken for three seconds. Um, what this do? What this does is your stagger still um, stacks, so you still get more and more stagger, and the time like just kind of stops. It basically just stops it for it stops you from taking damage for a couple seconds. Um, so very interesting. This is the more actually changing your goddamn rotation ability. Uh, so it's much more active. It's not as flashy or cool as some of the other level 100 talents for the other classes, but. I'll, I'll take it, man, because there's not too much choice. Um, obviously, you can either go for the DPS option with Tiger Palm. You can make sure you have more brews. You can keep up a giant Breath of Fire aura. Or you can make Iron Skin Brew give you some more of that um, mastery stack. So very, very interesting. And then you have High Tolerance. Staggered delays an additional 10% of incoming damage. And you gain up to 15% haste based on your current level of stagger, which, again, works off the 5, 10, 15 for light, medium, heavy. Very very interesting a lot more discussion needs to be done i'm not entirely sure how all of this is going to be playing out it seems that uh, monks on the beta that are you know doing mythic plus dungeons level 110 already getting all the artifact traits um it seems like they're you know they're really happy about the new level 100 talents but it hasn't per se change too much of how they're playing they can still actually survive for a long time um that's something i want to be very very clear when i'm talking about the monks they can survive damage, they can tank stuff, it's fine. It's just there's a problem with them not having more tools available to them, especially damage reduction. Um, because when you're taking on content that's difficult at a low gear level or just taking on content that you need to have reliable answers to some of the questions there, that's why Monk is kind of 
in its own little unique nebulous cloud of uncertainty uh, for not only myself but for other people as well it's it's very hard to how do i say this it's very hard to put a number or some sort of value on how good monks are compared to everyone else because they're able to stay alive but you know you're at a constant state of stagger damage you have to know exactly what the fuck you're doing if you fuck up when you're supposed to be using your abilities you're gonna die you know you have to hope for the crit uh, from celestial fortune to kill you back up especially if you're healing orbs it's it's a little bit of a stressful situation but this is a good step in the right direction it's very nice that they're going ahead and adding this i'm happy about it um moving on we have blessing of sacrifice which for protection paladins is going to be a 2.5 minute cooldown recharge rate instead of a three minute cooldown now i don't know if this necessarily means that prop paladins have two charges of blessing of sacrifice but it could mean that in the future one of their set bonuses or some sort of legendary item will give them an extra additional charge of blessing of sacrifice or maybe either one of the other tank spec uh, one of the other paladin specs will have that so it's going to be doing that uh and Beyond that, nothing else really changed for them. Uh, I think the other thing of note is that, yes, okay, so Judgment. Judgment used to reduce the cooldown of Shield the Righteous Charges by 2 seconds or 4 seconds on a crit. It is now only 1 second or 2 seconds on a crit. So it's an outright nerf to your, whole, your Shield the Righteous Charges. I would say that this by itself pretty much kills the whole notion of using Seraphim the way that we do now in WAD. I do not believe that you are intended to have it up as much as possible and use it off cooldown. I don't think that the value is there anymore. Shield of the Righteous is just so much damage reduction. I, I see Seraphim being a choice if you need to kill something immediately or when you are not currently tanking, you take you can use Seraphim, but it's no longer going to be a situation that you want to keep it up uh, off cooldown as much as humanly possible. I don't see that. I don't think that's the intended use for it anymore, especially with how precious your Seal of Righteous charges are. Um, in fact, if I was tanking as a Paladin, I would probably only use Seraphim if there's a very specific ad that needs to be murdered or as soon as my co-tank uh, tank swaps and I have the time to go ahead and afford to do an extra amount of damage without taking damage myself and getting killed. Beyond that, I don't actually think anything changed for Warriors again, but let me make sure. Yep, nothing crazy there. So yeah, I mean, big changes. The biggest, of course, being the Monk because it has a lot of different, um, you know, things that need to be taken into account. Uh, it's not super clear which of those three talents is the best. It further cements Monks, in my opinion, as being possibly the most complex uh, tank spec um, and then maybe even the most complex spec after Disc Priests currently are. Um, but I do want to go ahead and take this time to mention that I've been working on something in the background uh, because I'm not happy with the way that I left off my assessment of monks in Legion so far. What I've done is I've copied over my monk from live onto the beta realms and I've been playing it using uh, taking advantage of the fact that I have a shit ton of gear on my monk. He's like 740 eye level, uh, 744, 745 eye level, something stupid like that. Um, so what I've been doing is I've been playing him on the beta realms. I'm getting him through the broken shore. I'm getting him his artifact weapon. I'm doing a little bit of leveling. I'm going to do some dungeons. And I'm basically going to record all that and just talk about my experiences with playing the monk at a 690 eye level, which is what you get as you you know, you know just make a pre-made on the, the beta realms, versus my 744 eye level monk. And it's going to be taking into account how it feels to play um going from live to beta from so from wad to legion directly it's going to be taking into account cause same character same item same everything it's going to be the exact same journey i'm going to be taking once the game actually launches um so it's going to be taking into account how the class plays at that level but also it's going to be taking into account how quickly everything starts to become diminishing returns with the fact that once you hit 101 Boom, all of a sudden your stat ratings changes, and whereas now I have a shit ton of crit, maybe at 101 it's a pitiful amount of crit. At 102, holy shit, now my haste is going down too, my mastery sucks, now my multi-strike sucks. Or I don't even have multi-strike anymore, so I wonder what those things, what those items are going to be on my, my monk, so I have to check that. Um, but essentially the reason I'm doing this is because I want to further understand Monk. I'm going to be playing all the tank specs. I'm going to be making videos for all the tank specs. You guys already know this. So obviously it would help if I understand what the fuck's going on. And I don't feel that my assessment of Monks has been entirely 100% as good as it could be. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. As well, I'm going to go ahead and do my Paladin as well just because he has a shit ton of gear too. Sadly, I can't do this with the Guardian Druid, the Blood DK or the Protection Warrior because my characters on live don't have all the gear that those two, the Paladin 
Paladin and the Monk do. Uh, so that's just something that to look forward to. It'll be coming out maybe in a couple days. Uh, just kind of my experiences with it, what I have, my opinions are of the rotations, how they play with all that gear. Um, but I'm looking forward to doing it. And as always, I want to let you guys know that if there's something specific you want to see as far as the tanks go, uh, leave a comment down in the video below. Um, just let me know what you want to see specifically. I'm kind of running out of ideas for videos to make while I wait for big changes to happen. I have some other things in the background that I want to go ahead and do. And of course, I've already explained that I have a lot of personal stuff going on right now that's kind of uh, making it a hassle and more difficult for me to get things recorded and get things done. Uh, but I'm working through that and hopefully it'll all get finished up real soon. But anyways, guys, um, if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Give it a thumbs up if you if you really, really want to. Um, more importantly, I just want to thank you guys for all the support uh, and all the just the positive positive energy you guys give off. Uh, in the comment section, some of you guys whisper me in game. I'm really happy I'm able to help some people out, that some people enjoy what I have to say, that people take or give some value to my opinions. I appreciate that greatly. And if you want to go ahead and support me, uh, there's links in the description if you want to follow me on Twitch, if you want to donate through Twitch, if you want to donate through fan funding, if you want to donate through my fucking Patreon if you want to, all that just stuff is in the description. And I hope to see you guys around, and I'll be coming out with another video hopefully sooner than I have been recently. Thank you guys.